Welcome back, friends. Let's, uh, let's sell my rookie's heart, eh? In 23 days or less. Hello, Morgana. For real? I can't believe you control Mementos. This guy's different than the others. Yeah, it seems hinted at that somehow he gained his power from the supposed to be dead Yaldabaoth, which is weird. And I don't, and that seems like a gigantic plot convenience thing for me, but we'll see. We'll see if it makes any sense to me. Uh, regardless, I'm really excited to see where this goes in general, and what the enemies are like, and what, you know, if, if there's like a whole new host of personas. It does seem like there is. I don't know if there are any enemies slash personas we've faced before. I don't think so. So, yeah, that's nice. This guy's different than the others. I think I've already read that part, and, but, but just in case I didn't, there you go again. Mm, Rookie's going to be a tough one to take down. Indeed, but we're gonna do it, friends. In fact, he's probably not gonna be tough as far as, like, m this specific playthrough. Just be Well, I, I say that, you know, because- but, you know, I did have some trouble with that last fight, but I have a feeling it was because it was- I didn't have all my usual tools at my disposal, so... It really did feel like it was Focus. the same difficulty as you would be with your normal four party members and all the abilities and the baton pass stuff and all that, right? But all you had was a catchy joker. So I kind of feel like it was more difficult because of that, but we'll see. Regardless, you know, it's not like I had like a billion years worth of trouble. I probably would have if I was around 60 still, so I'm kind of glad I overleveled. I would just have had to frankly learn to play the game better though, I know that. This is why I overlevel, so that I don't have to think. I can just re enjoy video game. God damn it. And and I I try to default to that less, but you know, for this playthrough and for a first like practice big boy let's play, I really think it's um it's very apt that I go ahead and sort of reduce difficulty and also you know again I I, I love this game and am familiar enough with the base game to feel really comfortable doing this as my first big project as like a practice thing, and I've learned a lot so. Yeah. Uh, work desk. Hey. I know you're stressed, but don't stay up late. There's always tomorrow. Okay. So he doesn't want me to do anything as per usual. Goddamn it, Organa. You know, I keep forgetting, though, that you have, like, lines when you're on the sofa, don't you? I only just randomly remembered this. Hey, hey. We can't fail. Let's stop Maruki. It's something only we can do. Yeah, I, I haven't seen a lot of these for a lot of the game, because I kept forgetting it was there, and I just randomly remembered. One of these days, I might make a compilation video of more of them or something like that. Or just, like, include them in these, like... I'm thinking of doing big, you know, edited videos later where I just, I, you know, record content that I know I did not record for this Let's Play, and small bits will be mixed into the bigger bits, clip-wise and such. That's an idea I've been tossing around. I hope. Got a bit. Hey, hey. This isn't gonna be easy. Let's keep our guard up. Sleepy Durgan! I'm really intrigued where this is going. I really love the snowflakey, uh, um, you know. I love winter. And it's the middle of summer right now in, in where I live in real life. So it's uh, it's nice to soak up the winteriness of, you know, January in Persona Land. And, uh, well, and specifically Shibuya in this particular universe. And I don't remember what year this is supposed to be, actually. 2017 or something? I think it's always the year the game comes out, right? That's what it's supposed to be, or at least, like, the year they start developing it. I don't remember. What year- what year is this game set in? Again, I know it's a specific year. And I know that- I know all the Persona games are set in a specific year in real life. And technology and everything goes along with that. Like, you know, smartphones are a huge part of, you know, a lot of the functionality of this game. You know, like all these text messages and other stuff, so. And then in 3, you just had flip phones, I think, and, and even 4, I think. Uh, actually, I don't remember about phones in 4, but in 4- uh, in 3, I mean, because it's been- too long since I played three in any form, and I, if I, not if when I go back to that game, it will be the female protagonist in Persona 3 Portable, or you know, a, a re a remaster that they could release that hopefully won't be as lazy as the freaking SMT 3 remaster. Please, it deserves better than that. What I'd really like is a re-release of Persona 3 that is basically portable. Plus the answer from Persona 3 Fez. 
I think that would be best. And it would have to be basically a remake, because they'd have to pick one of those graphical styles and stick with it, and transpose one to the other. And I highly doubt they're gonna do that, but that would be fucking awesome. We're heading to the palace today, yeah? A good idea, I'd say, although we mustn't rush, of course. Of course, Haru will always be an all-proper. I love her. She's... she's beautiful. She's wonderful. I really do feel like I should romance her one of these playthroughs, but I'm probably going to romance I was about to say Kasumi, but apparently it's Sunire we'd be romancing. Very interesting. Although we must rush this. Yeah, honestly, if we want to accomplish anything, we got to get out there. I agree. Is that alright, leader? Let's go. Hell yeah, let's secure Root the Treasure. In that case, let's meet at the hideout after school. I'm guessing that we should be careful Act option is, hey, we're not going to immediately meet up. I guess it's 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 the option for hey I'm gonna go grab stuff to prepare I grab just stuff to prepare earlier and I still have most if not all of that stuff so would you you know actually I bet there's definitely better weapons and armor to buy for everyone so I think I'll do that first I'll probably exit out and do that okay all right the hideout after school then should we tell you Shizawa well we should probably still leave her alone many hugs for Sumi Raychan we. Tell everyone to meet at the hideout. We should talk all this over before we infiltrate the palace. Hmm. Seems everyone has arrived. Let us begin. Well, after we go grab stuff randomly. I'm pretty sure it'll still let us do that. I hope so. Anyway. If not, I'll be- I'll probably be fine without giving everyone better weapons and armor, but I- Since there were better stuff available for Joker and Akechi, I bet there's better stuff available for everyone, so... I'd like to take a look see at that. Uh. <sighs> the yourself shop. Seems everyone has arrived. Let's begin. I keep reading things twice without realizing it until I'm already saying the words. <laughs> February 3rd is the date we agreed on with Dr. Maruki. We've got to find that treasure already. And once that date passes, it's over. We all get that, right? <laughs> we'll have to discover a route by February 2nd, to be more precise. That's another way to look at it. And nice, you actually remembered? Yeah. Of course I did. Look at who we're talking about, man. This man's a mastermind. We didn't even know he was scheming against us until the last second. Although I think part of that is just convenient. Ah, the plot characters are oblivious because it's definitely pieceable together. Now, I didn't piece it together for a while, but I know a lot of Let's Players did because I love watching Let's Plays, and I've watched a few in this on at least Base 5. And uh, I haven't watched any specifically royal ones yet, at least ones including the, like, you know, this content, but I'm really hoiped to watch those once I'm done with this Let's Play. I mean, hell, I love Let's Plays. It's why I'm making one. It wouldn't be a terrible idea to secure our route le uh, sooner rather than later. Well, making one. I've made other Let's Plays before. We must be deliberate, however. We have no idea what's going to happen. Right. Yeah, Dr. Maruki's pretty much got the power of a god. I doubt I haven't, anything's going to go smoothly. We'd better not let our guard down. Very well. Let us go. Yeah, okay. We're already going right in. Ooh. I like this alternative, like, oh, metaverse it's... loading screen. I'm guessing it's to signify this is a different type of palace. Maybe... I've noticed there's just a general different visual aesthetic to this palace, and also a lot of the menus for this expansion. That, like... Those, I feel like they're bluish colors. Isn't that also what, like, the, um, the, like, Maruki-esque things on the map look like? Um, the, the things that Maruki, um, apparently left there on the map, like, you know. It's clearly some stuff to signify a change of reality, and I have a feeling that maybe those areas might specifically be colored that way because we're gonna have to go to them later and, like, clear the distortion around there. But maybe I'm reading too much into that. But anyway. Oh, it's... I assume you Hello, are. everyone. Hello. Why are you here? You're going to fight Dr. Maruki, yes? Please, take me with you. Interesting. Uh, but you can't go in dressed like that. Please? I'm done running away. Aw, uh, what's wrong with how she's dressed, Morgana? I don't get that. Why did he say that? That doesn't make sense to me. Like, okay, she's not wearing Phantom Thief attire, okay? Of course she's not really against him. Not really, really. Actually, wait, she might get it in a second. So Morgana won't have anything to complain about anyway, but like, what's the point of her wearing a coat? I don't get it. Like, what? What? Like, why does that matter, Morgana? 
anyway. There she goes. I can't keep I had a feeling. People there you go. Like there Senpai. you go, Morgana. I'm guessing he's like, you need Phantom Thief attire. Or, you know. I'm guessing maybe Persona abilities only really manifest when you have your Phantom Thief attire. They don't quote me on that. I have no idea. Either, unless that's been said before and I forgot, which is possible. But all I know is I, I just feel like it's really odd for him to bring up her clothes. Anyway. I want to live life as Sumire. Aw. That's awesome. <laughs> Color me impressed. Da, Morgana's awesome. Looks like she'll do just fine here. Also, damn that outfit. Mm. Anyway, sorry. Let's do this. Thank you. Oh my god, cute. Uh, In that case, we gotta come up with a code name for you. A what now? <laughs> I like it. A what now? Question. This sounds like the same voice actress for Sophie um, from Strikers. Is it? Or is it a different woman? I have no idea. I feel like it's the same girl, just by qual the tone of her voice. The timbre of it. Whatever you would call that. But it might not be. I, I feel like it very well might be the same woman. But I think I remember it very well might not be her. In fact, I, I think I'm leaning towards it's not. Because when Strikers came out, Atlas USA did a live stream. And uh, it, it had all the voice act or it had a bunch of voice actors in it, a bunch of the voice actors that were in Strikers, and a lot of them were, of course, you know, the ones that are known from Five. But then the voice actors for Sophie got introduced along with the voice actor for Zenkichi, and I think they both talked about how this is their first game with with Atlas. So I don't th actually wait. I don't remember if they said they were if she said she worked on Royal. I know Zenkichi. This voice actor is brand new, but I don't remember if she said she worked on Persona 5 at all. I guess I'll have to look that up later. Anyway. It wouldn't be right if you were the only one going by your real name, you know? Oh, you're right. Joker, got any suggestions? Ooh, I like Violet. Oh, that's right. Sumire in English is Violet. Ah, okay, there we go. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I had a feeling that was the non-joke answer anyway, and also... I like that. Violet. Yes, let's go with that. I like you. Yeah. Excellent. Now remember everyone, Violet, not Violent. Violet. <laughs> <laughs> I I've always found puns and, you know, playing with English and and stuff like that always I've always found it amusing. I, I love Futaba for that. But yeah, it's literally one letter off. If you're not careful, Violet sounds like violent. It's, it's a very small change in, in the way. There's just a little n mm sound in there. It's literally just a tiny sprinkle of n mm and then it's violent. <laughs> Is it a violet? Anyway. Yes, thank you for clarifying. Well. <laughs> I'm surrounded by absolute fools. No, you're surrounded by people who actually aren't so fucking serious and dreary and dark and evil and murderous. If not being a fool means being like you, Akechi, then I'll, I'll choose being a fool. Thanks. Are we done? We should probably get moving. You should probably shut the fuck up before we kill, before we kill you again for real this time. I'm sorry. I I know a lot of people like a catchy, and I'm sorry if I'm pissing people off by being so hostile toward him. It's just he's primarily an antagonist. That's what he's there for. And I know I'm I seem to be kind of alone ish at this, but let me know, friends, if you have a similar issue. But I've noticed that I just tend to be biased against villains because they're villains that are against the protagonists that I get attached to, right? Like, it seems like there's very few people that get like this so easily with villains. But that's just kind of how I am. I know, I know. Which is. Jeez. Which on, gets That's me cool. real conflicted about Maruki because he was really nice to us. And he... It's really weird. Maruki is a villain who has... I don't... Yeah, I was about to say completely honest and um, good intentions, but I don't know about that. I have a feeling, especially with, you know... His will seemingly manifesting as this dark, evil, tentacly stuff that... Yeah, I, you know what I bet it is? 
I just realized that must be the the god's power, right? Like Yaldabaoth's power, or whatever. Like, I I still would like any kind of like thing that makes any sense as for why Yaldabaoth is seemingly back, but and not like dead, dead. Because I feel like he should be. Oh, although granted, I guess people still would like to just not have to think, right? I mean, that's probably a natural desire everyone has. <laughs> Sometimes, at least, you know? I mean, hell, earlier I just said I'd like to not have to think when I play this game a lot, but I'll probably have to think a little bit more than usual before. But, and don't get me wrong, sometimes thinking is exactly what I want to do. And then I play games on higher difficulties. But, you know. Or I play older games that are just harder, you know? But, otherwise, you know, a lot of times, I'll be like, I'd rather not thunk. Possibly. Or, you know, I play games that don't really take a lot of brain power for me to play. Like things that I've played a billion times, or just things like fighting games and racing games and games that once you understand it, you don't really need to think a lot about it. Alright. Yeah. Hmm. Um. So, what are we supposed to do now? First, we secure a route to the treasure. We've got to know where it is before we can steal it, after all. We've already checked most of the places on the map, though. Looks like we'll need to go even deeper into the palace. Hold on, let me take a look real quick. Yes. There's a locked security door here. I'd say it's the best. that's the best place to investigate. Futaba, as always, on point. Being awesome. You go, Grill. Except, I'm getting some weird shadow readings too, so be careful. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna have to probably fight a mini-boss there. That's usually how this goes. Whenever it, like, anything like that's hinted at. Joker! Let's over in front of the auditorium. Let's keep going. 